Thank you. Hello. 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 Uh, Dennis and myself are in program planning. We've been fired again. Mm. But anyway, Dennis and myself thought it would be a smashing idea if we were in charge of the whole mm. of television planning. And so we will be. Applying? Oh, yes. yes. And so we will be applying for a job. <laughs> anyway, Dennis and myself say that this is the last edition of Do Not Adjust Your Set. And we thought that it would be a smashing idea if this went on forever. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. no. We went on forever. Oh, if we went on forever. Yes. And so it won't be. <laughs> but we will. No, it won't. Oh, no, I've got it wrong. Yes. I've said it wrong. <laughs> Never mind, we'll be going on <laughs> and every one of us. But one thing I beg of you, please do not adjust your set. Hello, you join us in the giant studio one, where we're making preparations to bring you up to the minute coverage as do not adjust your set goes off the air on this is final program. We've got David Jason, who'll be following minute by minute reports on his swingometer. At the centre of information, Eric Idle will be feeding our computer. <laughs> Denise Coffey will be correlating information from places as far apart as Luton, Bedfordshire and Seven Oaks Hans. <coughs> and Terry Jones will be keeping a watchful eye on anything and everything that might crop up at the last moment <laughs> We'll be on your screens in just 15 minutes from now So meanwhile Hello? Rome, Brussels? Felicity Carstairs? No, I'm sorry, no No, I don't You must have got the wrong number Meanwhile, on with the show do not adjust your set, says to all keen clue spotters, can you spot the deliberate mistake in this next scene? Get out. <laughs> goodbye, sir. Yes, goodbye, Thompson. Can I go now, sir? Well, you'll just have to stay and work late again tonight, won't you? I missed the train, honestly, sir. And what's your excuse this time? I'm very sorry, sir. So you're late again, Thompson. Thank you, sir. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, sir. Well, come in, Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> Trouble with Thompson is he's so backward. Yes? Oh, send him in. Hello? <laughs> Hello again, fans. Uh, welcome to the last of Ivor Clark's cookery classes. This week, to celebrate the occasion, Ivor and I are going to make a dish together. Now, what's it called, Ivor? Your French is so much better than mine. Shepherd's pie. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, Ivor, what do we need? You and me, my darling, that is all we need. In every program, I've gazed into your eyes, enraptured by your... Mince, I think we need, Ivor. What is mince? When we are alone together for the last time? Well, it's a kind of chopped meat. <laughs> Come away with me to Paris. Uh, take a hot dish. Oh, I will, I will. Oh, oh, oh Ivor, oh. you're going to be Bon appétit. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> It's me and my dog Arthur back to do a few more tricks for you. And the first little trick we've got lined up for you is a jump. All right, Arthur. And jump. And jump. jump. No, he says. I'd much rather climb on my bricks first. Right. And up on your hind legs and climb on the brick. Climb on the brick. Up, up. No, he says. I'd much rather climb up the step ladders and get me bone. <laughs> and climb up the step ladders and get your bone. Up, 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 up. Show me, he says, how to do it. <laughs> right, up the step ladders and get around and down, down, and grab the trail. And no, he says, I'd much rather finish with a song. 
How much is that doggy in the window? Woof, woof. <laughs> the one with the waggly tail. Woof, woof. How much is that doggy in the window? Woof, woof. I do hope that dog is for sale. Yes, well, next week, Arthur and I won't be here. I'll be back with a snake, and Arthur will be back at the Battersea Dogs Home. Thank you. Good evening, Mrs. Johnson. I wonder if your husband's in. Uh, yes, he is. What do you want him for? Uh, can he come out and play? No, he can't. He'll just have his dinner and he's got to sit down for an hour while the food goes down. But well, we've got to go in at half past eight. Well, I can't help that. He came home late from the office, so he's had his supper late. <laughs> well, can he come and talk to us? No, he can't. He's sitting down. Oh, can we come in and speak to him? No, you can't. You're always round here, you two. Why can't you play in your own garden? We can't. Why not? We've got visitors. Yeah. We want to play shipwrecks on your old car. Well, Mr. Johnson can't come out to play until he's had a rest, and that's that. Um, um, uh, uh, well, can you come and play? Oh, yes! Oh, why didn't oh. you say that? Oh, oh. 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 trouble with my hair. Well, you're using a hairdressing, aren't you? Yes, I'm using cooking fat. Cooking fat? You must be joking. You ought to be using new porridge. Porridge? Just look at my comb. Why, oh, it's filthy. Yes, new style porridge leaves home comb and hair absolutely clogged with muck and it sets rock hard in seconds. Just look at this. Oh, it's, that's wonderful. Yes, new style porridge is really wonderful in jars or I'm tubes. I'm It's only 17 11. Tomorrow. I school hermit. Metaphorically speaking, do you want to be cool? Is that what you're seeking? Metaphorically speaking, alone in a crowd, he is never allowed to make any noise. I mix with big boys, then this sword, he always gets caught, he gets so depressed, his mother depresses him. Oh. Not in your eye.
Do not adjust your set. Takes you back in time to the dawn of mankind. The twilight world of prehistory. Mrs. Black, the most evil woman in the world, escaped from Captain Fantastic on her blit boat. Now she reaches her destination, the Tower of London. But close on her heels is our hero, who has hopped on a river bus. This is Captain Fantastic speaking. Leaping ashore, I reconnoitred the position. And with my brolly, I immediately picked up the scent. This is Black, daring to attack the Tower of London. Was this the unbelievable climax of her secret plans? This could be dynamite. disguised as an ordinary sightseer, I suddenly noticed the ravens leaving the tower. By tradition, this meant the imminent collapse of the empire. There was no time to lose if I was to save the nation. All I had to do was to find her. the answer. They've got me. <laughs> Playing for time, I allowed them to tie me to a nearby tree. And then I heard Mrs. Black asking two passers-by to help. For a moment I was puzzled. 
I thought I'd seen them somewhere before. Because his face was familiar. <laughs> By now, the situation was decidedly nasty. <laughs> I was powerless. And then, as the terrible forces of the air converged upon me, I felt myself moving. Or rather, retreating. I had been saved by my old friend, the mysterious moving tree. And not a moment too soon. And now I had to get Mrs. Black before she could set off her dynamite with her horrible handbag. Suddenly, as we fought, the handbag split in half. And with no bag, her power had gone. <laughs> Triumphantly, I took her into custody. There's only one place for the likes of her. So perish all enemies of the nation. With Mrs. Black, the most evil woman in the world, captured, my mission was completed. So, our story ends. Well played, fantastic. Whenever the world is threatened, we know that you'll be there. Don't ring us, we'll ring you. Giant Studio One, where we're now ready to bring you the last closing minutes of Do Not Adjust Your Set. There's something like four minutes to go, and there really is an atmosphere of most incredible excitement in the studio here tonight. Ah, but nothing actually seems to be happening at the moment, so let's go over to Eric Idle, who's going to show us some of the great moments of the last three months of this program. Well, in these final moments, let's look back at some of the things this program meant. First of all, what were the things we stood for? Well, I stood for the National Anthem. I stood for Mrs. Granville on the bus. I stood for constant abuse. Oh, shut, shut up, up, David. <laughs> yes, it was a programme with views. It was the first programme to expose the cold facts about winter cricket, to expose the shocking truth about naughty mice, and to recognise the great plastic licorice scandal. It was the first programme to recognise East Grinstead, and to declare that life as we know it is not possible on Terry Jones. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. Well, it's still very tense here. Anything could happen at any minute, honestly. But now let's look back on some of the highlights of this great programme. Perhaps you'll remember such moments as this. You see, I didn't know the camera was on me. I was standing chatting away, you know, you, and I didn't realise they were all these big clothes up. I could have died. Oh, they're going it again. Oh, <laughs> and of course, do not adjust your set. Hold it a breakthrough in television techniques. Camera technique is just a simple matter of remembering one or two basic things. First, always make sure that you're speaking to the right camera. Second, always make sure that the camera that you're speaking to has got a red light on the top of it. And then, but never, never panic or lose you, or, or forget which, and then panic and think, and don't, and wait, which, maybe which one you've got to talk to all the time. You can go off your nut on the one. <laughs> there was screen splitting, soul searing romance. I love you. That's nice. <laughs> and heart rending, foot clenching drama. Charles, sometimes I just don't understand. <laughs> and we made newscasting history. Yes, Do Not Adjust Your Set brought you the first live television pictures from Parliament. <laughs> and we also gave politicians an open forum to speak their minds to the young people of Britain today. We're not going to offer you promises, I promise you. We're going to offer you concrete suggestions. A little rock pool for the garden, some crazy paving, a little concrete gnome, that sort of thing, you know. 
Good evening and hello, young electors. Or may I call you cats? <laughs> I'm Daddy O. Smythe, formerly known as Lance Captain Sir Archibald Barrington Smythe, but you can call me Dougie. <laughs> and I'm here to tell you about the new, switched on, trendy, swinging, extremely psychedelic, conservative party happening group thing. Wow. I've just returned from making the scene where the action is, down at the Pad of Commons, to tell you that we, in the Conservative Party of Gogo, -Go, are terribly interested in where you cats shack up. <laughs> Especially the old age swingers. So we're going to camp up our whole policy and turn on a thousand new council gaffs. Wizzo Brang, uh, rather super. Earlier this year, I was at the Electrical Banana Lonely Hearts Club Conservative Freakout Conference at Brighton, when a long-haired man who looked young enough to be my daughter said, Daddy, you're not with it. Well, now I'll never be without it, if I can find it. So do make like hippy hippy go-go people. Be like Granny, take a trip along to your polling boutiques and put your tips for your tops on us at the next vote-in. Swinging. <laughs> writing North Port. But meanwhile, here in the studio, tension is mounting to fever pitch as the last seconds of the programme tick away. But as they do, we've just got time to go over to David Jason on Swingometer. Well, the Swingometer's moved 4.3 in the last 30 seconds, and that's quite a substantial swing of well over 7%. And if this trend were to be repeated over the entire country in a minute from now, it would probably be um, about 20 to 6, I should think. <laughs> well, I'm afraid we must interrupt there as something's just come off the teleprinter. But it shouldn't take a second to fix it. So <laughs> let's go over to Denise Coffey, who's on the spot. Well, here, on the spot, there's terrific tension. There's only one minute left of Do Not Adjust Your Set, just 60 seconds, and the tension is fantastic. Over to Mike. I'm over to Terry. Well, by my watch, there's about two hours to go now. <laughs> so I think I'll have a little sleep. <laughs> I'm over to a ferry. Well, 30 seconds isn't very long, even by bus. And here at the Do Not Adjust Studios, we're all wondering what's going to happen at the end. Well, with only 15 seconds left, there's just time for a quick word from David. Boot! Thank you, David. Well, that's just about all. Five seconds to go now. Five, four, three, the tension's terrific. Two, one, it's the end! Ah, <laughs> oh, um, I'm terribly sorry. You seem to have mislaid the end of the programme. Um, hello? Yes? What? Felicity Carstairs? No, I'm afraid you've got the wrong number. No, I'm sorry, I can't help you. I don't know. Well, while we look for the end of the programme, here's some music. <laughs> <laughs> 